Do you know why a bull market is named after a bull and a bear market is named after a bear? A bull market is named after the constellation Taurus and a bull market is named after Ursa Major, which is also known as the Big Dipper. Bear market, it dips, so it's the Big Dipper. Bull market, Taurus was always associated with prosperity, abundance. Uh, it's May, it's literally right now. Ironically, another big thing I can, I can also say is at the very beginning of this, you guys both said you got your wisdom teeth taken out and you had tonsillitis both of which have to do with the throat it's taurus season taurus rolls over the throat so so you guys were both knocked out of commission at the same time and it has something to do with the throat area of the body this is stuff that the elites know and they they hide right in your face las distracciones y narrativas reinan este mundo tecnológico todos tienen una opinión de lo que es la verdad y lo que es mentira. ¿Quién controla el mundo? Los aliens son real. Vivimos en un Matrix. Estas preguntas serán debatidas con José y Daniel G. Explorando y descubriendo las verdades de nuestro mundo. Nuestras creencias. Y nuestro reality. Welcome to Cultura Truth Project. Dímelo mi gente, welcome back. We are finally back. We're healed. Oh. Oh We're restored. God. We had to we had to do a lot of prayer, a lot of oil to. anointing. <laughs> it, was, it was it, it, it was you, a Lord. thank you. So thank happy you. that we're better. Thank you, Yahweh. Thank you, Yeshua. <laughs> thank you, Holy Spirit. Man. Welcome back to Cultura Truth Project, everyone. Jose G here, Daniel G. We're back here for another episode, guys. We sorry we could not be here last week. I had all my wisdom teeth taken out. It was painful. I had to recuperate. And you couldn't talk because you had your tonsils all inflamed and Bro, you couldn't like, eat. I don't know what what was happening, but I had a bad case of tonsillitis. And um, <laughs> let's just say I was out for the count. Like yeah. I, I would, I think every time I would wake up in the morning, it was like I was getting hit with another bat and said, so go back to sleep. Ugh. So it was okay you know much needed time off so we we took it and we restructured some things and it's an it's an amazing time look things look a little different in my background so man, yeah man yeah, yeah, yeah it looks man. good looks different i like it know? looking good making improvements to the studio yeah. well guys we appreciate you uh joining us today we got an incredible guest lined up for today's show we have matt from team psychosmos and if you guys don't know what team psychosmos is you will today Team Psych Cosmos, they have a book out and a bunch of great uh, information, educational information on spirituality, the history of uh, of humanism, of uh, of, of natural, uh, dude, all sorts of stuff, spirituality. The, he has a book, man. He has been a mentor uh, for so many people and a mentor for Coach JV. Remember Coach JV who was on the show? I love uh, Coach JV. Month? Can't wait to have him back on. Well, yeah, well, Coach JV is my personal mentor as well, uh, not only from like the mindset and business stuff, but also from a spiritual side too. And Matt is Coach JV's spiritual coach, bro. So like we're going to the master we're, of the master, we're, we're, bro. We're going, we're going to the final level. Yeah, bro. So, dude, we're going to talk about spirituality. We're going to get deep into it, esoteric teachings and all the stuff that people don't want you to know we're gonna we're gonna talk about a lot of that today but before we get into the show guys make sure you follow us on all, what? what you know we need to play or if we could i mean if we wouldn't get taken down but the song from uh barry gordy's last dragon the final oh album. we can't because we'll get hit with the copyright oh, definitely man. we'll definitely get hit with the copyright I'm doing but guys it. make sure you follow us on all of our socials at cultura truth project on rumble make sure you follow us on gonzalez media tv facebook and instagram and subscribe to the podcast on all of our major platforms on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, and leave us a five-star review. And if you want to be part of the Supporters Club, join the Supporters Club. $3 a month, just tres pesitos, cheaper than a bag of Skittles, cheaper than a cup of coffee. You can get all the unrestricted, 
unedited conversations that we do at the beginning of the show that you can't get anywhere else. You can't get it on YouTube. You can't get it on Rumble. You could only get it on the Supporters Club. We'll have that link in the description for all you guys. So make sure you come and be a supporter at the Supporter Club. We love you guys. Thank you so much. So let's bring on the guest for today. He is a spiritual coach. He is a leader. He teaches other leaders of another way of thought. And again, this conversation that we're going to have today is not to change your mind about whatever spiritual religious beliefs. If anything, this is actually going to make it a lot stronger. So let's bring him on. We got Matt from Team Psychosmos. Welcome, Matt. Welcome to Cultura Truth Project. Gracias por estar aquí. Thank you for coming on, bro. Thank you so much for having me, Jose and Danny. I really appreciate it. And also, I'm sorry if I don't speak as much Spanish as you guys do. Oh, I tranquilo, you. bro. Tranquilo. It don't matter. You know why? Because out of me and Jose, I am like the one that messes up the most Spanish. So it's fine. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. I <laughs> love that little thing that you guys had at the beginning where it was, it, I, I was picking up little bits and pieces. I took a couple years in uh, like middle school, which is probably ancient history at this point. But, oh, we really yeah, appreciate, really that, appreciate being here. Thank you guys for having me. Oh, no, not a problem. Uh, before we get started with the conversation, Matt, where can the people find you on socials and plug all your stuff in right now, bro? Cool. I'm plugging it in. So you guys can go check us out. We're Team Psychosmos. Uh, the word Psychosmos is like Psyche and Cosmos put together. So it's P-S-Y-C-O-S-M-O-S. -S -S. You can check us out on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube. Uh, we got a Twitter that's not super active, but also if you're interested in, in working with us or if you want to check out any of the packages that we provide, you can go to teampsychosmos.org. That's where you're going to find a good bit of information on us. We also have books on Amazon and bookbaby.com. Yeah, and I'm about to get that book. It's it's massive, but there's so much great information in that book. Um, and guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna share all that stuff with you guys so you guys can take a look at it. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube right over here. And by the way, your Japanese is un impeccable, Matt. It's oh, thank unbelievable. You very much. See, yeah, that, that's what I've been working on. Yeah, your yeah, Japanese is amazing. Thank great, you very much. Yeah, that. great content on the uh on there. And then make sure you guys check out the book on Amazon. We'll have the link in the description. Psychosmos a synthesis on human history and spirituality. And you guys can check out the website as well, psychosmos.org, for all that stuff. But we're going to get deep into it. And uh, we, <laughs> Danny started off hot, you know, we're in, in the pre-show. He's like, is God real? I think that's a that's a loaded question. But before we get it's into it. to be loaded, people, Jose. Uh, why no? But before, we, we got to start with the people with a little bit, bro. But M Matt, tell the people a little bit about yourself. What what is that the work that you do and and what kind of people you work with? And tell us about your journey, because I know you spent a lot of time. You spent a decade working on your book to put it out. So, I mean, it, you had to learn so much stuff. So tell us about your journey, man. How did this all start? Yeah, great question. Thank you so much for asking. So, um, I mean, I'll give you the, the short version because everybody has a pretty long, tragic backstory, right? Um, so mine basically started, uh, I'm 30 years old and I was raised in the Northeast in America. And throughout that entire time period, um, I, I didn't do super well financially with my family. There was a lot of fights. There was a lot of drama. Most of it had to deal with, you know, financial uh, related issues with my, my parents. And then by the time I was about 17 or so, uh, I was basically on my own. Uh, I, uh, my, my dad had walked out on, on my family. My mom had turned to drugs and basically I was working two jobs just to be able to support our, our little family. Eventually I was able to put myself through college and I wanted to focus on a stream that would make a good bit of money. So not only was I involved in technology and putting myself through school for technology, but I was I was very scientific. I was somewhat agnostic. Um, I, I felt like there was a God or, you know, maybe a God existed. And I was a really big fan of Jesus and Buddha. Those guys, th those two men in history were huge, huge pivotal points for, for my spiritual growth. And I read through, not that I understood it, it's not really that big of a feat, but I read every single word of the Bible from front to back by the time I was 18. A lot of that was skimming. I'm, I'm, I'm really underplaying it because I didn't understand most of it. And I mean, I was a young guy. Uh, it wasn't like I was reading it and I knew every single verse and the depth that was behind it, but I really resonated with the works of the Bible. 
Well, by the time I was going through college, 19, 20, 21 years old, I was I had a fascination with the elite. I saw that there were definitely billionaires, even potentially trillionaires that were out there. And I wanted to know what they believed in. I wanted to know, well, I mean, I don't have a full grasp of my own spirituality. My family wasn't learning from these people. There was there was a very big disconnect between where I was and where I wanted to be. So I wanted to go straight to the source. Well, come to find out a lot of wealthy elite people, they don't they don't go to church. They don't go to temple. They don't go to mosque. They don't believe in the same things that I was raised on. And so I started delving deeper into that and asking myself, well, what is it that they actually believe? And, yeah, there's a lot of conspiracy out there right now. Um, there's a lot of uh, kind of narratives that talk about darkness and a lot of rich, wealthier people believing in darkness. And I can tell you that's for sure true. But there are also really wealthy people who are much more on a spiritual path of their own. And I just don't know if the uh, if there was really enough information that kind of got sent out to the public on different ways of breaking things down or interpreting things, you know, reading different mythology scripts and, scripts and legends and, and, and just understanding that there's actually like a baseline level of human connection that exists within any culture or any spirituality, just like you can be in a room with 50 different cultures and you can, uh, uh, people of 50 different backgrounds and you can learn something. The same can be said about spiritualities, spiritual lines, religious faiths and things like that. So really psychosmos is um, kind of taking a, a, a larger look at human history and spirituality. That really started for me when I was about 21. <clears throat> By this time, I had already started divesting so much time and effort into learning more about religions and mythologies. I was reading through different books. I mean, like I said, that started probably 17, 18 years old. But now by the time I was 21, um, I had actually kind of fallen into uh, trying a specific psychedelic, which I don't condone drugs or anything like that. But this, it kind of uh, awakened me, it kind of, of illuminated me to a point where I started seeing things in a much different way. And I can also say that one of the big, um, one of the bigger things that came out of that experience for me was I felt like I had truly personally found God in my own sense. Whereas before it was, a, it was kind of like a larger open-ended question. And I was kind of looking at things a little too, uh, I guess, humanistically, it, it was much too fractured as the way that I kind of think of it. I also was holding on to a lot of negative emotions that kind of like completely flew away. And I was able to actually focus on reading and studying. And then basically by, the time we got here, it, I just ended up finding my own spiritual path, wrote a couple books on it, started working with clients in a one on one setting, which is actually how I met JV. And then, yeah, the rest is history. Basically, what we focus on at Psychosmos, we're a team of, of a couple of guys and we all have known each other since elementary school. So we all were kind of like on this collective path growing up together. We all come from a Christian background. So Christ is something that's important to us personally. But it basically this whole thing came out of wanting to help further push humanity towards uh, a better uh, future, basically. Uh, and I love what you said too, Jose, and this is where I'll leave it, is, is it, uh, my goal is to never step on or impede anybody's spiritual growth or journey or whatever kind of spirituality that they have. Uh, all I do is I try to add layers of context for questions that I feel people constantly seek, but don't really fundamentally have the answers to. So that's kind of where we come in, where we're able to say, okay, I can actually show you some things that are very interesting connections that might actually expand upon your own spiritual journey. So that's really all that we try to aim to do. Just help other people so we can help the world. That's beautiful. I, I, I love that. You're using your life experience of suffering, pain and suffering, and turning it into light, right? And and mm -hmm. shining a beacon in a, in a world that's kind of filled with darkness right now, where where people really do need it. Now, Danny, did you wanna did you wanna jump in here because right now it's it, 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 we're we're just getting started, bro. I know we're just getting started. Um, it's it's an interesting deal because I think the one's own spiritual journey right um let it be seeking god allah whatever you are i think it's very personal 
And I think the the opinions can vary. So I think for a little bit, I'm going to listen before I start opening my mouth here. <laughs> All right. No problem, bro. So, uh, so Matt, so when, when we were working with, um, with certain people, leaders, I, th- I noticed, I noticed that you work with a lot of leaders, J- JV. Uh, I was checking out your Instagram. You've, you've had a conference with Jordan Peterson and just, just some incredible people, incredible names. Uh, what's it like working with leaders and teaching leaders other ways of thinking because the way that you present this information not only is digestible but it makes sense so what's it like working with these leaders and and showing them a different way sure yeah really great question um jv has been a really good personal friend of mine for um a couple uh, well over a year now we've known each other for a couple of years but we really got close over this past year and then with jordan peterson to dr peterson uh, we actually just showed up at one of his events but as far as my my first book, which is over here on my right shoulder, uh, on your guys' left, that one is about 800 pages. And Jordan Peterson owns the very first, un, not even like there's no ISBN number on it or anything. He owns the very first copy of that book. So wow. we went to an event. We went. Uh, we got VIP tickets. We talked with him for pr- pretty briefly. Um, wasn't really uh, a lot of uh, collaboration on that, but he was he was a really interesting guy to meet, and he he really enjoyed the book. He flipped through it. He said that it was pretty impressive. Um, but but going back to your question, what's it like working with leaders? Because it's not just JV. There are other people too. But um, for the sake of confidentiality, you know, I don't like to talk too much. JV is very open about it. Um, it's it's really fun, I guess, is the best way I can describe it. I love to see life in the most fun way possible. I think that uh, once you start seeing everything as work, then it no longer becomes play. And playing is part of why we're here. We're here to experiment and and learn. And so when I am able to get the attention of people who are leaders in their own paradigm, which I do actually work with quite, quite a lot of, it's more so expanding on what they already know. Every single person that I've worked with has built themselves up to get to a point of where they are. And all I do is I add context and additional information that allows them to evolve uh, in hopefully a better way. For for me personally, I, I think it always ends up coming out to be a better way. I haven't had any complaints yet. But my point is that as we kind of uh, expand our own evolution, like my evolution and my teams, we're building our repertoire of information. So too, can I pass that on to everybody else as we just consistently grow and learn? And there's more networking, there's more connections in which I do uh, get to learn. In fact, when I was at the Freedom Conference uh, with JV just a couple of weeks ago, I met so many amazing, wonderful people that are leaders and and thought provoking people in their own paradigm. Um, they, they're able to take everything around them and just make it better. And that's kind of what we're doing is we're building a community because the whole point of why we even wrote our books or started our humanitarian organization in the first place was to push humanity and help assist with that evolution, which obviously evolution um, uh, comes in revolutions like it, it's a spiral and that's where spirit comes from. So it's where there's a lot of etymology. There's a lot of root study of words that's actually linked with ourselves as human beings and our own further progression as a collective and also as a society. So as we uh, keep working and pushing forward, um, you know, we're building more leaders. The The more people that we work with, we're, we're not, I'm not only focused on ensuring that the people I work with that are leaders keep being leaders, but also building more leaders. And the more leaders that we have, the more people that can uh, ask the right questions and give the right answers, then we're actually pushing society towards a much uh, further end goal. And the, you know, the reason why is exactly what you had mentioned, you know, not, not even a few minutes ago, which is there's a lot of darkness right now, or at at least that's what it seems like. Um, Mm -hmm. Really, there's a lot of light that is shining in each individual person and the darkness doesn't really have its it doesn't really have its own place right now. It's, it's, I love it's, the way you flip that. Yeah, you have to. You have you have to invert things sometimes. Uh, you have to. I mean, you know, JV talks about this all the time, especially when it comes to finances and making money. Do what the whatever the ninety nine percent are doing. You want to be the one percent that does the complete opposite. And so that's where you have to kind of invert the thinking. Is there's darkness all around, but our light shines way brighter than that. And the more that we can engage in spiritual conversations, the more we can conquer over it. Absolutely. Now you mentioned something at the beginning of the conversation that this whole 
journey for you started because you wanted to know what the millionaires and billionaires were thinking. And I say that all the time because that's how I ended up here and how I ended up with JV it was going down the rabbit hole, figuring out how the uh, millionaires and billionaires operate, not only from a financial standpoint, but from a spiritual one, too. And I came to the same conclusion as you. And that's how I came to meet you and the, the entire community and really getting into this truth space of uh, of either call it conspiracy theories, truth talk, whatever you want to call it. But that's how I kind of ended up over here because I find it very intriguing how the elite and the powerful, they go into some other types of teaching that you can connect it to either regular spirituality, but they have a better understanding of it when it comes to frequencies, when it comes to vibration, when it comes to energy. Whoever these people are, they have a very depth understanding of how that concept works. So when you came to find out about all of that, how did you process it and how did you come to understand it? Yeah, really great question. I actually felt like I was pretty tapped into it from a younger age. I resonated more with that than anything else that I had kind of been brought up in. Um, as far as the logical explanation, but that's kind of where I can use their own paradigms of information against them because the logical information is balanced by the emotional information that we gain when we read things like the Bible or the Quran or the Torah or the Zohar or something along those lines, or the Mahabharata from India. Any time that you have a, a, a spiritual text, it will not only provide logic, but also emotions. And a lot of ways that the elite right now are seeing things is purely from a logical standpoint, which is, of course, the frequencies, the vibrations, energy, energy work. Um, another big one is astrology. You know, J.P. Morgan Chase has, has that famous saying, which is actually, I believe, from his autobiographer, but it's um, uh, or from his. Yeah, his from his biographer. Uh, millionaires don't use astrology. Billionaires do. That's like a big. That, and that was, of course, back in like the 1900s when billionaire, bi billions of dollars was a lot more. Um, but the, the ironic thing is even in the Bible, and, you know, I'm just saying this as like a preface, there are illusions to stars. I mean, for example, the three wise men have to follow stars uh, from the directive order of an angel in order to find baby Jesus. Or, for example, the vision of Ezekiel, where God is sitting on a throne surrounded by wheels and there's a lion, a bull, a man, and the eagle. And this is uh, uh, very largely, especially back then, because the Old Testament was written by the Hebraic peoples, uh, the, Hebrew, the Hebrews at the time, they were really big into astrology. And so the elites even today are really, really big into astrology. It's just how you use it. It's just a tool. Stars are stars. Um, but th so they're not, they're not evil. It's when you decide to worship them, or if you decide to, uh, put your energy into, you know, playing with these things as tools, um, it, from a standpoint of trying to like win people over with money. And, and actually when I, when I was at the freedom conference, I did my speech specifically on spirituality and finance. And so, for example, you guys are probably well invested or you guys have some financial literacy. But do you know why a bull market is named after a bull and a bear market is named after a bear? A bull market is named after the constellation Taurus and a bull market is named after Ursa Major, which is also known as the Big Dipper. Bear market, it dips. So it's the Big Dipper. Bull market, Taurus was always associated with prosperity, abundance. Uh, it's May. It's literally right now. Ironically, another big thing I can I can also say is at the very beginning of this, you guys both said you got your wisdom teeth taken out and you had tonsillitis, both of which have to do with the throat. It's Taurus season. Taurus rolls over the throat. So so you guys were both knocked out of commission at the same time. And it has something to do with the throat area of the body. This is stuff that the elites know and they they hide right in your face. Car company logos, you got Dodge Ram, you got Toyota. Toyota is the sigil of Taurus, Hyundai uh, uh, and Honda. That's like Pisces and Gemini. There, there's so many different ways that they hide this right in people's faces. The symbolisms for a whole bunch of like restaurants, fast food logos, things like that. Um, just company logos in general. A lot of them are referencing old esoteric information, even stuff that the originators uh, who wrote the Bible 
uh, the Old and the New Testaments, respectively. These are things that they understood to some degree. Um, like the, the writers of the New Testament were uh, not necessarily Christians because they there were no Christians. It was just the disciples that followed Jesus at that time. So a lot of them were these, uh, and, and the New Testament was written in Greek. So there was these um, philosophers that were that were writing uh, parts of the New Testament. Most of them followed Pythagoras or they were uh, Gnostic or Hermetics, things mm. like that. Mm. And there's like there's like a bunch of um, different. Okay, I, I understand. I understand what you're coming from, but this is where I I'm gonna push back a little bit, and this yeah, is I I guess, where the where the debate comes in. The early followers of Jesus, the core mm -hmm. twelve, were all Hebrew mm -hmm. Jewish men who were uneducated, with exception of Thomas, who was a former lawyer. Mm. Okay, so yeah. so to mm. say that these men who were hand chosen by the Messiah, Yahweh himself, Yeshua, to do the works of the miracles that are reported in the New Testament and across the Bible, and to say that these men knew is a fallacy. They okay. were taught. They were taught, right? They were taught. They were yeah, taught, yeah. right? Right. So it's like this. You read the entire book of John, which is the first book in the New Testament, right? And 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 it tells you the life of John and the and and the basic kind of details Jesus's life. Then it goes into the book of Acts. And in the book of Acts is a very spiritual book. And as we've talked about this in this, in, in this, in this podcast before, it was like the followers of Jesus post his resurrection were very lost men. They gave up the way. Yeah, no one they, they gave up the way for over a month. They were like, well, he died. I don't know what to do. And, and all and the, and yeah. And all the apostles and disciples died too. Right. Well, they didn't die till it's sometime later. Yeah, until, right. Till sometime later. They were, almost all of them were murdered. They were all they murdered. They were all martyred. Correct. Day, yeah. Correction. They yeah. were all martyred. Okay. Yeah, I like that. I like that. <laughs> oh no, I don't disagree with you at all. I, I was referencing the the writers. No, no. In no. Greek well, well, you have that to understand that the, that the writers were well, at least the core when it comes to the New Testament. John was a firsthand account. Mm -hmm. person who saw Jesus and lived with and walked with Jesus. The mm -hmm. only person who did not see Jesus or live with Jesus or walk with Jesus in the New Testament is Paul, also known as Saul. So mm -hmm. you have to kind of look at these things. And like He's the only one that has true spiritual knowledge that comes from the Pharisees pre, you know, he hunted Christians, right? In the New Testament. That's what he did as Saul before his moment in Damascus. But I go back to saying that in the book of Acts, they talk about all these old ways and how Jesus fulfilled the old laws. And when it comes to finance, you know, Jesus always talked about us like, hey, give Caesars with Caesars and give God what's God's and I, I shall multiply you mm -hmm. 10 times folded over, pressed down, shaken together. Mm -hmm. So when, when, you know, when I hear a lot of these things, especially in what I call, you know, like pop spirituality. And mm -hmm. I see what they say and I'm like, okay, hold on. Some of this doesn't make sense because when you talk right. about, you know, what reality of investment is, right? Like if we, we all know this, if you freely give somehow you have more, I don't know why. I don't know how that works spiritually. I can't tell you how that math works, but I'll tell you this. If mm -hmm. I give the more that I give, the more I get. And I don't know why, but that's just how it is. I might not get monetarily, but I definitely get more opportunities. I get more influence. I get when you, yeah, when you have the right intention, right, yeah. right. So it's one of those things where it's like when people say these things about, you know, hey, this is what the early believers said. I, I have to push back and be like, that's not necessarily true, because I, like you, have dive, I, div driven deep into the Bible, and I'll tell you this Good. that that it's like one of those things where it's like, hey. Did they believe a lot of the old Jewish ancient Hebrews believe that are that do have a lot of things to do with the stars and all this? Yes, but it's not in the context of what the new age rich people think. It's not the same. Right? Oh, yeah. I mean it is I'm... not the same. And it's and it's unfair mm -hmm. and it's and it's unfactual to say that the early followers of Jesus were smart people because they weren't. Okay. So yeah, I see, I see, I see where you're coming from. I'm trying to figure out the I'm trying to figure out the debate point because so because uh, I, I don't I don't mind a debate between the years of when Jesus died 
and when Constantine had the Council of Nicaea where the New Testament was highly popularized, that chunk of time, which was roughly like 250 to 300 years, there were groups that were coming out of Greece of people that were called Gnostic and Hermetic peoples. Correct. And they they were really big purveyors of the teachings of Jesus. And that's what I was referencing. Not the prob probably not super literate um, disciples, because you're exactly right. I mean, a lot of them wandered. There was a lot of lost teachings. There's a, there, I mean, that's actually one of the biggest uh, argumentative points that we have today is we've found new books of the Bible or we have discovered new writings, or we have this, like, so there's a lot of conflation be, be behind that, because a lot of people are arguing, does this exist? Does this not exist? There's, um, there's one that I was just researching, just, uh, I don't know, about a month ago, which was, uh, uh, which this is like the second time I've looked into this now, which is um, the, the gospel of Judas Iscariot, or something along those lines. I, I think that's what it's called. So it's like, now you have all these people digging in caves in the Middle East. And I mean, they were doing that during the Crusades, too. That was another big part of it. There was a lot of uncovered information that came out in, in, burts in spurts and bits and pieces. But also, I love your point, too. It, we also have to study like the Babylonians, the Sumerians, the Canaanites. You're talking about the Pharisees. You got, you got, we got to talk about the Canaanites because yeah. the Canaanites were a very dark people. They, yep. they they were they were really obsessed with that astrological uh, kind of interpretations and things like that. But there's also a lot there's a lot of evidence that shows that many things were removed or changed. I mean, one great example, and let me ask you this because I, I I can tell that you really really like this topic. Um, have you ever read your New Testament verses? in greek retranslated into english from the greek yes i have yes i yes. Per, and, i, well, I per, for my daily consumption of the bible i like the new new uh, international version just because it's a little easier to understand and read but i have gone down the let's get the original greek translated and versus the original uh uh, Hebrew version and what those mean. I have gone that route, and there yeah. are certain things where it's like, okay, numbers, there are letters, a lot of there's a lot there, of different. There things. are a lot of things that are very different from the English interpretations of of the way that things are found in the Bible, for sure. I mean, like one great example that I I love to talk about is there's a verse in the New Testament that talks about sorcery. Now I'm not, I can all, I can also tell too, I mean, based on what I'm wearing and everything, a lot of people think that I'm new age, but I, I mean, I wear a rosary with Christ on it all the time. So I have that right here, but for my thing, uh, I'm actually wearing a hundred percent cotton. I'm sure, you know, Deuteronomy Leviticus, it says thou shalt not wear clothes of two, two cut cloths. Right. So yeah. it's, it's basically, it's it basically. Uh, what I try to do is I try to follow the things that make the most sense. Now, why did they write that though? Why did they write that? Um, be, because they've done st studies now today out of, I think it was Harvard. I don't remember who some, some university where when you wear lower quality clothes, it can actually restrict blood flow and it can also cause, uh, you know, allergic reactions if you have polyester or spandex, which cause health issues. So what I do is I wear 100% cotton, 100% cotton, and 100, well, you can't see my, well, I'm wearing well, pants. Let's, and, let's keep it PG for the people. Let's keep it PG. No, I love that. I love that. So, <laughs> so, but the point is I, I stick to those laws and I actually will argue that I stick to them probably better than most people, but I still, I still, read my bible the way i interpret it i mean i got a king james version uh right up there yeah i got a king james, i just got a king james version like right up there but the point is that when you go in you study i'll give you an example when you go in you study and you break down the interpretations of the old testament into its original hebrew with the crowns 
See, like I, I actually know Hebrew. Like I've studied the letters. I, I and not only that, but I've studied the Torah and the Zohar. And and I know about the Talmud. I don't know if you know about the Talmud. I won't say anything on that. But um, there's also the Greek that comes out of the New Testament. So one of my other favorite examples is you talk about pharmakia. Pharmakia is the Greek word for sorcery. Or, well, it's more of like, it's the more etymological understanding from my perspective is it's more like snake oil salesman kind of uh, stuff. I'm not one that likes the idea of magic or sorcery that's like Harry Potter. I, I wouldn't necessarily call it daemonic because, again, that even that word etymologically links to your when when you use even a word like demon you're you're calling it a knower so you you can't even you do that because the of the way that anglish the the language of angels english was created from latin hebrew and greek and so and there's a whole trail of that but what i do is i study etymology which is the root of the words the root of the sources so when you go into the new testament and it says thou shall not you know uh, or actually, no, it's more so that you will not work with sorcerers or fake practitioners or things of that nature that just want to take your money or they want to manipulate your spirit. Right. Um, well, the word sorcery is pharma pharmacia. So if you've ever been to a CVS, a Rite Aid or a Walgreens to pick up some pills, you're literally the literal interpretation would be you're going against the Bible. That's not how it works, though. See, what, what it's really talking in my purview, and this is the way that I've studied the Bible over the course of many years, is you will not allow your spirit to be outsourced to somebody else telling you that they have some kind of a magic potion, pill, or nonsense. I also don't believe in magic in the sense of the way that the Bible describes to go against it. But when I read these things, you mm -hmm. there's, a there's a layer of literalism, which is what the elites want you to take. Because the literal material interpretation is the more lower vibrational, it is the more demonic or satanic. That being said, moving outside of that context, you take the more metaphysical. Matthew 10, I believe it's Matthew 10. Jesus, why do you speak in parables? Why does he speak in parables? And he answers, because the people who are going to get it are going to get it and the people who don't won't. I'm paraphrasing. But that's what Jesus himself said. That is Jesus's word. He speaks in parables because he doesn't want you to take a super hyper literalized interpretation because the ever since the Council of Nicaea, they have gone against the interpretations of the Bible from a metaphysical perspective. Now, with that being said, this is my last final point. I'll pass back to you. I don't like a lot of the New Age stuff. The New Age stuff tramples upon the truth of just reading it and having your own spiritual connection with God because mm -hmm. community is very important, but your own and your own connection to divine source and God, that is, that is what, I mean, Jesus says, go in your, go in your closet and pray. Which right? is why we bow our heads. That's right. And, and the, the, there's a lot that goes into it, but when, when, what I don't like to see is the hyper literalization, nor the um, nor the new age stuff either, because I, because it's got to it, because it, I, I and I agree with you. And again, a lot of people see me, they assume that I'm a new age guy. That's not what I'm thinking. It, tr trust me, it happens all the time. When I went when I went to the Freedom Conference, I had three older uh, baby boomer guys come up to me and say, Listen, man, I really uh, I, I saw your whole get up and everything, and I really I really misjudged you right <laughs> off the cuff because then I, and one of them even apologized because he was like, I'm sorry, I really thought that you were some hippy dippy new age spiritual guy. I'm like, man, I just I read the Bible. It said, don't wear two cut cloths, so that's what I'm doing. You know how hard it is. This is Japanese imported cotton. Man. It's a hard <laughs> You know how hard it is? Well, they paid a lot in shipping for that one. That's a flex. If he, that's a flex saying, hey, yo, this is imported, dog. That's, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. It's so, so I like it. I like it from a... Uh, he, he, I like it. Yeah. Go ahead. Matt keeps it 100, bro. He keeps it 100% real. So real it. that he imports it. his cotton from Japan. That's right. I try. I try. And, <laughs> and, and, and too, and, and 
like like you talked about like pharmacia and like whatnot, right? Like I, yeah. I yeah, like to me when I when I think about a lot of these things and it's like you know like the early followers of Jesus were called the people who followed the way right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Jesus talked about this thing. He was like, hey, what about the Old Testament? Don't do this. Don't do that. Don't, don't, you know, whatever. Jesus, especially when it comes to like, like inebriation was it's the greatest example I could think about it, right? He always said, he was like, hey, there's nothing wrong with celebrating when you think about, and you also have to think about the culture of where Judaism comes from, right? Mm -hmm, where mm -hmm. Christian and Judaism and, and, you know, uh, Muslim people come from, they believe in celebrating. They believe in certain things. What they don't believe in is there's, they believe in the basic concept of there's a time and a place. Yep. If you're going to, if you're going to drink, you drink, you don't drink to get drunk, but you drink to celebrate, man. If you've ever been like one of my greatest friends in the world, he's a, he's an Ar, Ar, um, what is it called? Armenian guy. I used to, I trained jujitsu with him. Nice guy. And he's old school Coptic Christian, right? Like he, he, he was like orthodox, doesn't drink a day in his life, except for like twice a year at a wedding <laughs> and a whatever. And he goes, listen, brother, listen, bro. It's not that you can't drink. It's you can't mm -hmm. drink all the time. Right. It's, not that you can take, it's not that you can eat. It's don't overeat. There's a time to do it. There's a time to work out, man. Just learn. And, and it's like these concepts that are old world that like you have to you have to think about when you, the Bible was written and you know these early teachings. Yeah. These are the cultural things that are in the Bible that are lost in the modern day Christian, right? It's so easy to be an American and be like, well, do not sin. It's like it's not about lack of sin because we all fall short of the grace of God because we have all sinned. It's about knowing the time and place of like, okay, even Jesus celebrated, even Jesus drank wine, right? Even, the man you know, turned and, water into wine. He did the man. And in the word, it says that the, that wine was better than the one that was first brought out, which in the culture at the time was breaking a cultural barrier. Cause at the time in the, in the early days of Judaism and the ancient Jewish, Jewish culture, it's like you brought out the best wine first. And once they got drunk, you brought out the trash wine. Right. But like when Jesus turned water into wine, he was like, nah, homie, we saved the best for last. So you think about those things and I'm like, hey, spiritually, I think a lot of the modern day Christians got it wrong, not because they of the lack of faith. I think it's because of lack of interpretation. Like you said, like we forget to look at the original context of the culture of the time and be like, okay, if the early Jews had all 635 rules that are in the old Testament of how to live your life, but even they understood the concept of like, no one in their right mind can follow 635 rules. Let's just follow the three most important ones and hope for the best. Mm -hmm. Then you just, then, <laughs> no, I'm serious. It's mm -hmm. funny because I was having this conversation with my pastor, my spiritual leader over the week. And I'm like, dude, if this is what, how he was like, bro, that's how they did it. I said, they hope for the best. And then they would sacrifice once a year. And hopefully they, they had the grace of God. And then Jesus came and broke and, and broke that paradigm. Right. But you have to, look at these spiritual things and, 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 and I love how you do this research and stuff, but man, like it, it could be really misconstrued because a lot of these rich people, they'll take certain things and then mix it with another thing and be like, Hey dog, like this is what it is. No, that's an abomination. And to me at least, and I'm not afraid to call it out. I'm like, Hey, whatever, you know, guy from CERN who, whatever, you know, we dudes playing with some demonic shit. Mm -hmm. Oh, for, <laughs> no. sure. Yep. for sure for yep. sure but yeah but uh, then you also when when we're talking about like these elites and practicing this different types of spirituality you also kind of have to talk a little bit about mysticism too because mysticism kind of fits into that conversation you know especially it's very very present more so in the music industry and i i, I tend to notice that more in the hip-hop uh side of things i pay it to you know i my brother and i we listen to hip-hop um and you know we have the whole situation kendrick lamar drake um then we doja cat you know doing these crazy satanic videos and rituals and we see all these reports and performances and just just being way more out there but there's a lot of stuff that happens behind the scenes and i was watching this one interview of uh, it's a term called 
uh, I think it's called spirit cooking. I'm not sure if that's uh, if I'm getting that right. Yeah. But um, but these people they, they're like admitting and dropping names, names like Beyonce, names like Ariana Grande, who's who publicly said that she practices mysticism. So where does mysticism fit in all of this? And uh, where where some of the old ancient I want to call them ancients, but I guess practicers of of abrahamic um religions did they practice any type of mysticism in their own branches of belief or anything like that yeah absolutely and i mean you know to answer all those questions so number one right now i mean the elites are just very confused and by the elites i'm talking about like the celebrities that you're talking about specifically those ones that are in like the limelight um the ones that are getting all this attention i mean they're really trying to uh, just infect the populace and society with a lot of darker negative interpretations. Um, they have their own perspective as to why they're doing it. And we have ours, we see it and it, you can clearly see, okay, this is, this is not a very holy thing that they're doing right now. Um, it, it really kind of goes into asking yourself, does consuming anything that is on that kind of a demonic or satanic level, does that just change who you are or your spiritual faith or connection to God? I, I say absolutely not. If you're if you're right with God, um, none of this stuff phases you. It doesn't bother you. It, 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 it bothers you from the perspective that it exists and that people are watching it, but it doesn't actually impact you as an individual because you're right with God. Um, you, you're, you, you have that divine connection. So it's really only infecting people who uh, don't care about their own kind of spiritual journey, or they could even be potentially agnostic. And they're like, oh, yeah. I mean, I hear I hear it all the time. People are like, oh, yeah. I mean, you know, so what if somebody is saying this? Let, let them do whatever they want. It's like, well, all right. If that's your prerogative, that's fine. But that's the exact prerogative that they're trying to pass as well. But at the end of the day, and I teach this in my life coaching too, it's like the only the only time that the devil can sneak into your ears when you let him. And I, I use this, I use this as an example all the time. Um, I'll, if I have somebody who says like, uh, for example, I can't get over, um, like I see a beautiful woman and I really want her. And I say, well, is it her fault for existing? She might be doing something. Sure. Is it her fault for existing or is it your fault for having those thoughts and for looking at her in that specific way? You have that ability to fight off that that temptation. You have the ability to fight off that sin. It's all down to you at the end of the day. Um, that's one of the things I think is is really largely overlooked in a lot. And, you know, it goes back to what Danny was saying. There's there are some mistakes that the modern Christian communities are making. Sure. It, it goes to say that with every modern spiritual community, and no matter where you are from or who you are, because spiritual faith your relationship with God supersedes everything else. And then community comes second. And if you can find a community of like minded people, then yes, it'll expand and it'll grow and it'll build. Um, but that's what I think most people struggle with is they struggle with the community part because they will outsource their connection with God to other people to tell them what they believe rather than believing what they should pursue to find, which is a relationship with God. People won't pray. Um, some other people call it meditation. They won't pray. They won't actually spend the hours and time diving into their own spiritual connection. They won't spend the hours and time reading whatever book that they prefer. Um, they would rather show up to, a pl and I mean, every, every single spiritual culture does this on the face of the planet. It's not just America. It's not just churches or mosques or temples. They, they have a Hindu temples where they do this. It's they'll go, they'll meet for once a week. They'll, they'll do their rituals because most of it's rituals. Um, almost all of it's rituals, the singing, the, the eating the food or consuming any of the, uh, anything. It's all rituals. At the end of the day, they're performing some form of a ritual and then they go home and some people are no better from it. Um, and that's, I get, I think where the mysticism ties in, cause I'm going to tie that into your, the second part of your question. The mysticism plays a, in a huge role in almost every major form of spirituality, not from a, Ooh, I can perform magic and send fireballs out of my hands and I can talk with angels or demons or blah, blah, blah. It has nothing to do with that. 
The mysticism is from, again, that going back to that energy conversation. You can't blame energy for existing. Energy comes from God. It's all God. Everything, quantum physics, you study quantum physics, you get down to the smallest level. You're talking about squiggles. Everybody talks about living in a matrix these days, but Planck's scale shows us that you either have open or closed squiggles that basically create everything. And the open and closed is the same shape of the of the genders that we have as human beings down down there. It's open or closed. It's it's either a one or a zero. And that's exactly what it is on a dual a dualistic level. That's how God made it. And so from that Planck scale perspective, they understand energy. They start manipulating energy. They understand that thought becomes energy. And then depending on how you use it or how it manifests, it goes down that that's that specific rabbit hole. But it is the control is what they're really going for. They want to have control. So in order to do that, they want to get into people's subconsciousness, subconscious. And so in order to do that, they'll put a tell a vision in front of your face to tell you a vision to get it's a literally it's a black box. I mean, I don't have my phone on me because it's, to... it's a black mirror. It's a black man. I mean, your cell phone. What is your cell phone? It's a black box. Oh, holy cell phone. Please give me any answer I want for exchange of my energy. Oh, wow. OK, I now know how to make chicken and dumplings as a recipe from my phone. That's literally, I mean, it's, if you were to go back even a hundred years and you were to show people that they would, people would lose their minds. They would, they would probably hang you from the lamppost because they thought you were a witch or a wizard or something just because you have a phone. And so the point is the mysticism plays a huge role in it. And now what matters the most is you. And again, you and your relationship with source, God, the universe, whatever you want to call it. I call it God. That's just me. But you, you sometimes I call it the universe because other people feel more comfortable that way. Point is, when you can connect to a higher power or higher source or just energy in general, I mean, that's that's really what prayer is at the end of the day. You're, you're sending out thoughts. You're sending out energy to God. You're sending a signal and you're communi you're having a communication. With it. That's why he's called the most high in from the judeo-christian sense but even today i mean i'll give you one great example the caparat it's a it's a jewish ritual um because you asked them specifically about the abrahamic traditions uh, i mean this one I, I don't even know how long this has been going for but it's theorized that it's been going on before christ where they take a chicken and they swing it over their head and they believe it absorbs their sin and then they kill the chicken and i mean that they still do that so Wait, they remind you of something jose <laughs> <laughs> that remind you of something? Oh, oh man! Oh, oh, oh my! <laughs> there must, be some, must be some backstory to this. You guys kill chickens, no, and you're no, your no. So, <laughs> so there's, so there's a, uh, it's, it's comes from the West Africans, and and it, it's all over the islands in the in the, mm -hmm. in the, in, in the Caribbean. So they call it Santeria, right? Mm -hmm. And um, the, one of the main rituals is to actually kill a chicken. Yeah, <laughs> they're, they're alive. They're a lot like that. Yeah, yeah we had uh, we had Santeros in our family, or we, we still have them. We don't talk to them anymore. But we don't, we don't, uh, talk, we don't talk about them either. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But we 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 definitely had some some rituals that I didn't know there were rituals, but now I do. Uh, <laughs> you know, with with coconuts and some chickens. Uh, mm, so God, yeah, God. definitely, bro. Some some yeah, crazy weird stuff. spitting on you from a distance. It's a whole thing, you know. It's just things happen. What's funny is today. I, this is what I'm going to say, and and I'd love to get your guys' opinion on this. I think today we have it really easy because we had a lot of amazing people that came before us to teach us right from wrong. A big a big person for me was Jesus Christ. Um, another big one, um, although I'm not as connected because of the culture, is is Buddha. I like Buddha. He he has a lot of really cool things to say, in my opinion. Um, but the, the point is, I think that we're really spoiled. I mean, when we think back to the first startings of human civilization, that's what people did. They believed, oh, wow, that sun, you know, they thought that was God. And they did dances, they did rituals. And that has been the root of, I mean, it's what Danny was getting at. It's, I call it going to origin. I always ask people, go to the origin of why do you believe what you believe? and delve deep into that and do that for every single little belief that you have. Um, because that, that becomes a very sobering experience when you realize, okay, maybe some of these things are mine and some of them are not mine. 
some of these ideas are mine and some of them were put there. And then you start getting into the the, the depths of understanding yourself better. You can connect with source God. Um, you can connect with, you know, your own personal sense of spirit and find that. Now, I think one of the big reason that the new age stuff is so popular is because um, people are tapping into stuff. They're tapping into other things or they're just tapping into their own imaginations. Um, I see a lot of people talk about aliens or uh, whatever else. And I'm just like, Hey, uh, I'm so cool if that's what if that's your thing and that works for you and you can be a good person from that. But until an alien stunt comes knocking at my door, I've seen stuff in the sky that doesn't make sense. I don't really care. There's no impact that I'm going to be able to have on it, me personally. Um, um, and what we do is we just tell people to prioritize the things that they can control in their lives. Um, and so so that's where you kind of have to make your own daily habits. Um, you know, all, all, like I said, all, a lot of mythologies, spiritualities or religions use rituals, whether they're positive or negative. Transubstantiation, that's the taking, taking the, uh, the wafer, the body of Christ, the, the blood of Christ, the, the drink. This is very popular among Catholics. That in and of itself is a ritual, but it's not it, but it has a negative connotation. The word has a negative connotation. It's a tool. It's a tool that we use to connect to our own semblance of spirituality. It's not the thing itself. But if I were to say, if I were to openly say I do rituals, well, I have daily habits. My my morning ritual is I wake up and I pray and I meditate and I go and I get a glass of water, for example. If I were to say I have a morning ritual, people are going to look at me like I have five heads because, again, we have attacked even the semblance of spirituality. So I can't even dress like this. I go like this in public. And people are people are looking at me like, what the hell is wrong with this guy? And I'm like, what's wrong with you? You got you got some other dude's name on your shirt. Like, <laughs> I, I, I got my own name. I got my own name on my shirt. But other people, they'll wear like the sports jerseys and stuff like that. I'm like, OK, is that is that your idol? Is that your God? What are you wearing the clothes? For? So it's, it's like and, and I, I don't I don't mean in a literal sense. I mean, in, in, in a in a funny sense, in a funny <laughs> sense, because I think you're supposed to make, make light of light. So. So I love what you touched about earlier. It's like there's a lot of spiritual attacks that happen to the common person. I believe in spiritual attacks. I do. Mm -hmm. I think I think they happen every day. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're small. Sometimes they're and and they're not. And you said, but if you're right with God, they shouldn't affect you. I disagree. I think they mm -hmm. do affect you. Mm -hmm. I think they do affect you in a very deep sense, especially the closer you get to the source. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, because, oh, like you have a reaction of what's right and wrong. Not just what's right and wrong. I think this is this is where I might get a little woo woo on you when it comes no, to not my at all. belief. Not at all. To my belief, right? Where yeah. example, you take your average, let's just call him Joe, right? Joe is a former gang member who lived life on the edge, burning his life on both ends of the candle, did drugs, sex, women, rock and roll, whatnot. One day he shows up to a Catholic church, a Pentecostal, doesn't matter, gives his life to Jesus. Do you think his life just got easier? Are you asking me? I, I'm, 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 I, I, I've it's rhetorical. seen, <laughs> it's rhetorical. Do you think his life just got easier? I, and, yeah. and, the, and the contrary, he just tapped into the source and his life is about to get a lot harder. One, breaking of old habits to literal mental and spiritual warfare that's happening within himself. And that's the part that most people don't understand. It was like, Oh, I just accepted Jesus into my heart. Why am I struggling with women? Why am I struggling mm -hmm. with putting that needle in my arm? But I believe in God. Mm -hmm. Why am I struggling so much? I can answer this very, very pretty easily. When I said right with God, are you starting that at the point where he's finished all of that internal work after that point? Or are you starting right with God when he returns to the church? See, that's, that's, that's the debate a lot of people have in the community, right? Because mm -hmm. to me, you become right with God the moment you make that choice. You don't, now that manifestation doesn't become physical till sometime later, but spiritually you're right with God when you make that choice. Right. When you say, Jesus, I give my heart to you, man. I know I've I've walked away from you. I've divorced from you. I know that I haven't been tapped into your light. I have not done these things, but I repent for that. Please accept me, forgive me 
and help me become a better person. That moment, spiritually, it's fixed. But the ramifications of all your actions that you've done in this world are still here. And the devil or that evil dark energy, whatever you want to call him, that's what's going to still be the thing that the human struggles with. Mm. See, I, and I think that's where I might see it a little differently. Um, and I don't I don't think you're wrong at all. Um, I think that there's definitely uh, an argument for that. I think when I said right with God, I meant getting through that darkness period, getting through having to make up for some of the darker things that you do in your life without justifying it while also fully embracing and accepting the new you and getting to a point where you can fully 100% admit to yourself, I have made mistakes in the past, or I have sinned, or I have treaded in deep waters. And now I see the light. I live the light. I embody the light. That is the difference. That to me is being right with God. I think that what you said is definitely super important. That making that choice, you become right with the idea of the relationship with God. But if you want to live your whole, I mean, the word holy means whole, W-H-O-L-E, if completed, it's completed. So you have to, if you want to be the holiest or most godliest version of yourself, which is what I try, I try my best at least to exemplify, even with the clothes, like I don't wear the clothes fully just because of the, the Old Testament says so. I do it because it's comfortable and I like the style. Um, but I'm comfortable with that. I know myself. I'm authentic. And I think that when you can live a fully authentic life on that side of good and that side of light where you can know thyself to the fullest extent, have that relationship with the source, have that relationship with the most high God, then, and only then can you fully say, because like if you, if you sit there, even if you've done half of the work and you've made the choice and you can't ask yourself that question, am I right with God? And you even have the slightest doubt, then you're not, then you're not. But if you are, if you fully feel like you are, and you're not deluding yourself. And there are a lot of people who lie to themselves. So that that that's like a whole gray area that's thrown into it that you just can't measure. But if you really truly are and you can ask yourself, am I totally free from sin? How do you do that? How do you do? That? There's no way that you could unless. I think I personally believe it's impossible to be completely free from sin. Unless. Unless this is where intention comes into play as a variable factor. What was your intention? You, there's no way you're, you're exactly right from, from a trans. Well, I don't know how to say it. Transitory level, whatever from, from a, a logistical level, there's no way to not sin, but was your intention to sin? Mistakes are, are made every day, but was that your intention you know, I think it's I think it is in the Bible where it says like you you sin when you have the thought, not when you do the action. Correct. Mm -hmm. So if your intentions are always set right, no matter what the outcome is, if the cause to the effect occurs and you have zero intention, but somehow somebody ends up getting hurt along the way by complete accident. Something along those lines, as an example, there's obviously like a, a wide variety of ways that this could go. But when you set your intentions properly, aligned in your heart, in your spirit, to the deepest root of your core, to what you believe God is trying to lead you to do, and you know that there is no way that it's going to hurt Any somebody reason? else, even if it accidentally hurts somebody else, but even when you know in your heart, like I'm not doing this for the intention of sin. I'm not doing this. I'm doing this for the intention of good. Then you can live in a state where you feel closer and connected and, and so on basically right with God. That's what my, that's what my definition was when I said it. Thank you for the clarification mm -hmm. because, because then we could get into the, the, the little things of like, what is good? Right, mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. like, We're, like, what, what is, is good? good? What is here good? for another three hours? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hey, oh, yeah, what is good? Right, we could get like, into is, it. 
<laughs> yeah. what is what is good without evil i mean right no right it's not I mean, even now, it's, now danny's getting into the question why did god create the devil do you want the theological answer or do you want the <laughs> right right we had started the conversation uh, you, you had mentioned about experimenting with certain uh medicines and not that you condone it or anything like that but right, right. When, and, and that's when you kind of like it triggered your awakening and everything so when you went through that experience some people i've spoken to other people that have had experiences with uh with plant medicines either be dmt or ayahuasca or san pedro um and everybody describes it a little bit different their own experience but i have heard the common denominator of almost like going into a different reality do you think that these medications do open up portals to other realities within that we can't see to the naked eye so really really good question and it's it's harder to answer uh, even as somebody who's tried it it's harder to answer than just that um first of all i know i know more people from my personal experience of talking with people who have had a deeper um, spiritual awakening, if you want to say, it kind of takes the veil off of the eyes. So there's really no way you can't become more spiritual one way or the other. But I also know people where it is dramatically backfired on them and or hurt them, which is why I always say I don't condone it. I don't recommend it. Um, I think that it's one of those things that sometimes, um, you know, can potentially call to you, but I don't think that it's for everybody. Uh, it, for me personally, it was the most uh, intense experience that I ever had. But in my own paradigm, I had a one on one conversation with God. That was the what I experienced. That's just me. There's no way I could prove that. There's no way that I could, uh, uh, you know, get into the I could I could over explain the heck out of it. And it still wouldn't really matter because that's just what it means to me. So I don't even like to really go into it. I learned a lot about myself from that experience. And I think I think really what it does is it's just, um, <clears throat> you know, our bodies have energy in different forms and ways. I mean, we science talks about this too. You eat food, you get energy. What does that even mean? There's a con there's a whole bunch of conversion processes, chemicals, blah, blah, blah. Anything that we experience is, it starts with an energetic stimuli. A lot of people think that it's a uh, chemical and the brain just operates in chemicals, but all of the chemicals literally wriggle out of their specific glands and whatnot from some form of an energetic stimuli. Most of it's the five senses. So sight, you know, smell, touch, taste, whatever. So, uh, but there are, I also think energetic stimuli that come outside of the five senses. And this would be, you know, you, you have very spiritual women, even part of the church who have connections. They'll talk about angels. Then you also have some darker people. They talk about other things. There, there's there's ways in which energy exists all around us that we can't see cell phone towers radio wi-fi you can't see it but it's clearly there and we're baking in it um and with that being said the energy difference that you receive when you're in that kind of a psychedelic experience it's it's um i don't know about portals but it's it's almost as though I felt like my soul was larger than I've ever felt it before. Like the the soul that I had, and I was I've always felt pretty tapped into it, but I felt like it expanded a really dramatic sense when I tried this, and then I um, I felt like I was connecting to something. Uh, I, I well, I felt like I was connecting connecting to the thing, which was God. In, in the highest level sense. It doesn't mean that I was uh, like talking to the God, like I'm super special or something. And that's where I think a lot of people take it too far is they have these very deep experiences for themselves. And then they try to convince everybody else that they're really special. We're all special. Um, we're all, we're all made in the image, uh, so to speak. So we all have that, that beautiful gift inside of us. And that's what makes us unique uh, as a species. But I think what it does is it really just harmonizes parts of the brain to tap into things that you can't see. I think that's really what it really comes down to. And there are some people who tap into the wrong things. That's why they talk about 
in setting your again setting your intentions the, the bad trip the bad trip well some people call it like demonic possession too you know and i mean i think that when you open your energy up to anything and you are you are at a specific frequency you're going to call that frequency so if you're in a negative state of mind or a negative state of life and you take something that opens up your energy to be experienced by something else then yeah because all the people that i know that had really bad experiences with it were not right up here to begin with they all were actually in the complete opposite. They were in a very bad mental state and then they opened themselves up and then bad trips happened. So again, this is why there's a lot of, you have to do a lot of preparation. I mean, if you want to do anything like what you had mentioned, I think you mentioned ayahuasca, DMT, San Pedro, you need at least a week. You need at least seven days of like purging, eating nothing but fruits and vegetables, eating super clean, praying or meditating and fixing the mental mindset, fixing the spiritual, the energetic body. Wow. And then going into that experience. I mean, there's a lot, if you just do it for the sake of doing it, I mean, you're nuts. <laughs> that's, that's what I would say. You're nuts. Cause you're, you're, you're not preparing. You're opening yourself up the doors for any form of energy to kind of get swept in. And I don't think it's any different. I think that's what's working on a larger level, like those medicines. I think when the media, the TV, the news, all the fear mongering that they do, that's working at it from a more physical lower level where they're trying to break through people's energy by scaring them, getting them get, cause fear, 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 self doubt, and um, uh, guilt are the three biggest tools that the devil has fear, guilt, and self-doubt. If you feel any of that stuff, there's a hold. And so you have to remove you have to remove that stuff completely. You have to completely annex those feelings from your body. And that is such a difficult thing to do. But when you try those types of psychedelics, sometimes it, it, it can either help that process or sometimes it can really damage that process. So that's why I never condone it or never recommend it. It's just something that exists, that, again, as a tool. But what going back to what I was saying with Danny, what are your intentions? Are your intentions to use a plant medicine that God created so that you can connect closer with God? Or are you going to go do a binger and drink and take a fistful of mushrooms? Because... I mean, I've done comedy for about five years. I've seen guys go into K holes and have a good old time. And yep. I've also done some magic mushrooms and had a great old time. But that's not the point. The point is <laughs> we're not condoning still a side bit on this. Show. We're, yeah. we're, we're, we're not, no, no. But I think you say something very powerful, especially people that do like hardcore psychedelics. You are tapping into something. What it is, I can't begin to tell you. But I do know this. I've been in rooms where you can feel the energy shift. And I and and has it been in the sense of yes, as a performer? Yes, right? Like I, I, I think I've talked about it on the show several times. And Jose, correct me if I'm wrong, where like I will say one thing on a microphone and literally feel the air either get heavy or get light mm -hmm. and if and if that's not something of some sort of collective consciousness energy right. energy flow currency of some kind i don't know what is because it, it's happened at the comedy club but it's also happened you know, at a house party, at a restaurant, it's happening. These things, which like, you feel this, and for people who want to experience that, you know, via psychedelics, I say you're cheapening, in my opinion, your experience, right? Because if you become spiritually mature and learn to discern a room, because I, that is a spiritual gift. That is a spiritual gift. You can, you can, you can hone. You can literally be in a room, I mean, and be like, okay, is this guy, what is this guy's energy reading? And it doesn't have, he doesn't have to say a word to you. You're like, what is his energy reading? What is it? What is his, his, his intentions? How is he operating in the room? How do you feel those things? And I think when you learn to have those spiritual goggles on and learn how to read those things, you, you, you have a better sense of life. And I say that while I've tried 
things that you know my parents our parents watch this by the way <laughs> so i'm sorry mom i've tried magic Shout out to them. <laughs> <laughs> i've tried these things and it's just one of those things like i you learn and you're just like mm, doesn't doesn't hold the water to feeling the real thing mm. and my favorite experience i've ever tell you it's like i was you know during the pandemic one of the early times where i performed in front of you know 300 people and I did very well, but it wasn't the energy you expected. It was like people were laughing, but it was like this uncomfortable. It's like, we're not supposed to be here. Why are we here? Where? Why are we so close? We haven't been so close to each other in such a long time. Why is our energies mingling? It was a, an atmosphere of confusion. And I feel when people do psychedelics, they usually come out of it. Oh, my God at least from my experience and people telling me what they've come out of, it's like, Oh my God, I've experienced a higher level, but they don't know what to do with it because they don't know. They don't have the discernment of what to do with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I definitely agree. I think that um, a lot of people who try psychedelics that have not been on their own spiritual path for delving into whatever that means when they try psychedelics there, they, blast themselves i mean that i guess you could say that kind of was the case with me but not fully because i didn't even know if i didn't know where i stood with everything but i still would pray a lot i would still pray to god a lot and then when i tried uh it was specifically dmt um Brave it man. was it well I, I it kind of fell into my lap it was almost a, a complete accident and when that happened, I came back a much better person. I felt, and this is just me again, I'm just sharing my experience. I felt very different in, in, in the best of ways. I felt I could feel God's love on a level that I hadn't felt before. Um, and again, that was because I was a very hurt person looking to heal through a lot of problems. If I didn't have the right mindset or the right mentality or anything like that, uh, at that point in time, that could have really gone a completely different way. So that's why I always preface that. But I, I do agree. And I love what you said, too, because it, it goes into energy, reading the energy of a room. You can feel even when even when just one person walks into the room and you love that person you feel that when somebody that you despise walks into the room you feel that too right that's almost okay. stronger than the that's almost it, a stronger emotion and it's energy because, flow. because you're not because you're not used to feeling it and if you're used to, it, it's it's like it's about repetition really with the with those types of emotions when you see somebody that you really don't like and they walk into the room that probably doesn't have an, happen as often because we as humans like to live with people that we like most of the time. So, you know, you marry people or you you date people that you, you like most of the time. But when somebody you don't like that you try to avoid comes in, that's a, it's it's an infrequent emotion. So you feel it. You do kind of feel it stronger because you're not used to it as much. And you see that person. You're like, oh, yeah. Right. Like you feel that. Well, yeah. there's a there's a reason back in 2020 they kept us six feet apart. That's all I'm gonna say. That is that. true. I, I even I even mentioned that because uh you know they've declassified the documents that say that they estimate that our heart sends energy out roughly six feet. So that's why they wouldn't want us to connect. They wouldn't want yeah, us we've, to we've actually connect. we've actually covered that on this show, you know, about the toroidal field that the human body emits. Yep. Uh it's like a big donut that kind of surrounds our body six feet right. out. You know, right. so when they when they were doing the social distancing six feet apart, huh? They didn't keep us apart. Wonder wonder why they didn't want us intermingling our energies. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Food for thought for the for, for the audience. Mm -hmm. Well, Matt, I want to say first of all, bro, thank you so much for being on the show. We need to bring you back on and have another deep conversation because I think we only scratched the surface with today's episode, and there's a lot more conversation. I know Danny's like ready to bite on the bit for the next conversation. I'm ready. I, I love it. I love having these guys. I don't think Danny and I disagree at all. I really no. Don't. I don't think it's a. I I think I think it's like. I think, this. I think it's like. Everything. I think it's like most of Judeo Christian thought leaders. Right. We believe in all the basic same things. We just disagree on the details. 
Maybe, maybe. I, I don't think we disagree on anything. I think I think we probably see things a lot more similarly than you might think. It, mm -hmm. We just have to explore. We just have to have those open conversations about it. I this love what it. I'm here for. That's what I'm here for. That's exactly why we're here for. Well, guys, I want to thank everyone for coming to the show and watching the show and being back on here. It feels so good. I, you know, I hated not, not being back. But guys, make sure you follow us on all of our socials. Make sure you follow us on YouTube and on Rumble, Cultura Truth Project, Gonzalez Media TV on Facebook and on Instagram. Subscribe to the podcast, all major platforms, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, and leave us a five-star review. Join the Supporters Club, $3 a month. You get exclusive audio you can't get on YouTube, you can't get on Rumble. Make sure you join the Supporters Club. Follow Matt at Team Psychosmos on all socials, Instagram, Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it. Check out the website, teampsychosmos.org, and pick up a copy of Psychosmos, a synthesis on human history and spirituality available on Amazon. I'll have the link in the description for all of you guys. We appreciate you. We love you. And we'll see you guys on the next episode. Nos vemos, mi gente. Bye. Bye.